<laughs> oh, you listen. You listen. I'm not going to take the credit for listening to me, Rowan. I, I didn't offer the solutions or anything, but Dan from Lions TV did say a lot of what you were doing, and he was right about what he said. How long have we wanted you to play two at the top now? And you know what? It worked because when. Oh, he got some people to work. Trying to be part of it as always. I've got, got a couple of yes, Maggie's mace. Right, let's go. It's to and from, he had options. When this bit of the ball, we can slip it to Bradshaw and vice versa. It gave us more up top. Fleming had a better game sitting behind. Is he doing enough? I'm not sure. Is he pissed off because he hasn't gone to Burnley? I think we've done him a favour rather than go up that shit hole, to be fair. But there you go. It's, it's another story for another day. Two at the middle. Billy Mitchell, Savile, very well today. Hey, keep your noise down, son. We're doing a video. Have some respect to Dan Millwall. I think that Casper will be one of those two when he comes back. Brian's had a, had a good game, good influence. We had two wing backs today. So we, if you're going to play three at the back, you've got to have two wing backs. I know that sounds a bit of a fucking rolls of the tongue one. I don't think Danny Max should have really been dropped. I think if he, he's unfortunate, he only plays as, as part of a right back, four at the back. That's very unfortunate for him. The new lad, Norton, Crufty, what a good what a good addition he is. That fucking lot are so noisy. Keep the fucking noise down. We've, the back line has been immense. I mean, we said bring in Leonard, he would add that bit of steel. He gave, he gave um, Hutchinson and Cooper the ability to, uh, play their football and Cooper ends up man of the match and then we've got a situation where I think Lindog should be man of the match the keeper's earned his crust 100% 100% the keeper's earned his money he's done a fantastic save there when he's done a deflection and pushed it in the top corner and he's pushed it round the post that's 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 great that's what you want from your keeper because there's been a few doubts creeping in about him there's been a few got the old basketball team behind us haven't we got our globetrotters We've, we've then, we've then, we give us a basis. We should have got a second goal first half. Should have got a goal second half. Stoke came out the second half and they turned it on. They turned it on Stoke and they put us under the screw. And that end of that game was like a playoff game. We were backs against the wall and we were, we were up against it. And we've got away with one at the end there, but we haven't because the defence has stood, stood um, firm. Imat, Imat came up, when he done well, Maku, he done well. And I think that he's nearly nearly scored there where he went, went to pull the trigger and the bloke's just knocked it off his toes. We have got away with one at the end, but we deserve to lead and we deserve to win that, win that game. And Rowick, you listen to the tactics. You do have to play that two formation up front at home game. Away games, revert it back to the sort of diamond back the other way. Two there, one up top. And then in the home games, flip it over at the top. That's how we, sh we should do it. Next week, Birmingham away. God, that's tough, isn't it? After I'll kick off up there, draw there, but you go into the international break after that. But if you go win international break, nine points in the league, you're up to all sixth in the league. That's a big turnaround from that shit show at Norwich, and um, it's a happier camp today, isn't it? Gonna get an Indian that tonight. The I'd like to know what people's thoughts are on the midfield. What is our best midfield? Even what is our best formation? What is our best home formation? What's our best away formation? Where do we think we're going to go from here? How do we end, think we're going to end up in the season? If we go through the players a little bit more in depth now, Jake Cooper, Len Dog, Hutchinson, I think they had fantastic games today. I think they really played well as a three. It showed when you took Wallace out, the Wallace out the fold, and you put Len Dog in there. We had the legs, and he can play the ball out there. It gave the others two a bit of confidence. Hutchinson hardly lost the ball in the air against the big 18 for them. Which is a, and when he, he did, I think he slipped it in and he somehow put it over the bar, the uh, their Brazilian striker. The wing backs, yes, Brian and both uh, Norton, they will be good wing backs. They are getting the ball in now. They give us a bit more game forward, like it. The midfield, I think, for me, would be Casper and probably Billy Mitchell rotating with a, a Savile to bring the best out of the three in that position. You're three up top there in whatever formation you're going to play them. The best for me is Nesbitt and Bradshaw with Fleming behind them. If it ain't going to be Fleming behind them, it's going to be Watmore behind them. That is, but we've also got, you remember, we've got Honeyman kind of come back into this side. Honeyman is a great addition. 
Evans can also go in at centre back of the three as well to shore that up. But we have got options, but Gary Rowett's subs today were very panicky and they were very like, well, let's throw anyone on that pitch who's a defender. We can't keep doing that. We have to learn when to put our subs on to make an impact on the game. Stoke threw their best subs on to start the second half and they battered us the second half. But we had chances to snatch it. Those snatch chances, balls pinging around in the box, we've got to take those chances. And um, that's the long and short bit. But again, I'd love to know what other people think of it. Singing in the rain. <laughs> Carry on.